Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. So have you ever asked yourself which corporation makes your favorite tool brand or any tool brand of that matter? I know I have. So today we're going to delve into that question a little bit and hopefully provide a few answers. This is a difficult topic to research because there are so many different brands and spinoff of brands that finding a clear answer becomes hard to find. I've tried to be as accurate as possible, but with so many acquisitions, mergers, brand discontinuations, things change quite a bit. So making a clear list becomes pretty difficult. But if there are any inaccuracies in this video, let me know down below in the comments. Let me show you what I found out though. Let's start with the largest tool company, Stanley Black & Decker. Stanley Black & Decker began around 1920 with the merger of Stanley's Bolt Factory and Stanley's Rule & Level Company, which was started independently by two cousins, Frederick Trent Stanley and Henry Stanley. They're one of the biggest tool corporations in the world and own approximately 16 separate tool and accessory companies, including Stanley, DeWalt, Craftsman, Mac Tools, Lennox, Irwin, and others. The president and CEO is James M. Lorry, and they employ approximately 57,765 employees for all of their tool brands. And in 2017, Stanley Black & Decker reported $12.74 billion US dollars in revenue. The next company is TTI, or Tectonic Industries. They was founded in 1985 and are headquartered in Fort Worth, Texas. They own and operate approximately 12 tool brands, accessories, and vacuum companies, including Milwaukee, Ryobi, Hart, Hoover, Dirt Devil, Imperial Blades, and more. The CEO is Joseph Golly Jr., and they employ more than 5,600 workers around the globe. And they also reported $3.5 billion U.S. dollars in revenue in the year 2017. Next, we have the Robert Bosch Tool Company. And it was founded in 1886 in Germany by Robert Bosch and is headquartered in Stuttgart, Germany. Their U.S. headquarters is located in Farmington Hills, Michigan. They own approximately 11 tool and accessories brands including Bosch, Dremel, OTC, Vermont American, and more. The CEO of Robert Bosch Tool Company is Volkmar Denner. The North American president is Mike Mansweti and they employ 35,000 associates in North America and reported $14.5 billion U.S. dollars in revenue in 2018. Next is the Fortif Company. Fortif was spun off from Danaher in July 2016. They own approximately four tool and accessory brands including Fluke, Matco Tools, Tektronix, and Keithley. The CEO of Fortif is Jim Lyko. They reported a total of $6.7 billion U.S. dollars in total revenue for 2017, and they also employ around 26,000 workers. The Apex Tool Group was originally formed as a joint venture between Cooper Industries and Danaher, which, as we just seen, is now the Ford of Corporation. Their headquarters is located in Sparks, Maryland, and they manufacture over 30 brands of tools and accessories, including Gear Wrench, Crescent, Weller, Job Box, and more. Apex Tool CEO is James Roberts. They reported approximately $1.4 billion U.S. dollars in revenue in 2017, and they employ around 8,000 workers. Next is KKR, Kohlberg Kravis Roberts, which is a private equity firm that has recently purchased Hitachi Power Tools, which had purchased Metabo Power Tools, and is, which is now being rebranded as Metabo HPT, and also owns Hikaki Tools, which is also now what Hitachi Tools are rebranded as internationally. <laughs> so as you can see, companies who own these tools and their information is muddy at best. Now we have Chevron, but they focus on many other areas besides tools. 
However, they do manufacture and sell skill, skill saw, Extron, hammerhead, and more. It is difficult to pinpoint the exact revenue from tool sales as their main focus is in crude oil and they have so many different revenue streams. We now have Emerson Tools, and this is another corporation that focuses in many other areas but owns names such as Rigid, Greenlee, Clark, and Paladin Tools. They only own the rights to produce and sell Rigid power tools, however, and not their hand tools. Rigid is sold exclusively at Home Depot and they offer one of the best warranties by guaranteeing their power tools and batteries with a lifetime warranty. Next we come to ITW, Illinois Tool Works, and it was founded in 1912 by Byron L. Smith. They sell approximately nine tool brands, welders, and accessories including Passload, Miller, Hobart, Ramset, and more. The Illinois Tool Works Corporation is located in Glenview, Illinois. Ernest Scott Santi is the CEO and president. They reported a revenue of 13.6 billion US dollars in 2016, and they also employ more than 50,000 workers. Now we have Ideal Industries, which was founded in 1916 in Chicago, Illinois. They are a privately owned business and not a corporation. They offer approximately six tool brands, which include SK Tools, Western Forge, Casella Measurement, and more. Their headquarters is in Sycamore, Illinois, and since they are a privately owned company, they do not have to report their revenue, but from what I could find out, it is somewhere between $100 and $500 million annually. The CEO of Ideal Industries is Jim James, and they employ approximately 426 workers. So as you can see, that is one of the smaller tool companies, but they do make SK hand tools, which is a quality product. The last tool company we're gonna cover here is Snap-on Incorporated. Snap-on was founded in 1920 by Joseph Johnson, an engineer from Milwaukee, and William Siderman, who worked to develop five handles and 10 unique sockets that was geared toward making working on automobiles a little easier. They produce and manufacture approximately four tool brands and accessories, including Snap-on, Williams, or known as J.H. Williams, Baco, and CDI Torque products. The CEO of Snap-on Incorporated is Nicholas T. Pinchuk, and they employ around 12,600 workers. They also have many franchisees that start their own business selling Snap-on tools by going shop to shop. On a side note, Mac Tools and Maco Tools also have many franchisees selling their brands. In 2016, Snap-on Incorporated reported 3.71 billion US dollars in revenue. There are a lot of other corporations I didn't cover because of video length, but as you can see, there are only a handful of companies which own all of your favorite tool brands. And there are also a few independent tool brands that I didn't cover, like Makita, Fine, and Hilti. And I did not include Harbor Freight in this because they don't manufacture their own tools. They just go straight to manufacturers and have their tools rebranded into the names of their choosing. So where do Harbor Freight tools come from? That's a good question and one I'll try to answer in another video. I think it'd be interesting to point out though that Harbor Freight is headquartered in California and they employ around 17,000 workers in the U.S. And they also had a revenue of around five billion U.S. dollars in 2018. They're also a privately owned company that's still owned by one of their original founders, Eric Schmidt. But Harbor Freight's for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider hitting that subscribe button below. I'm going to be doing more videos like this, including tool reviews, some projects, and more. So I hope you stick around. And also, comment down below and let me know what your favorite tool brand is and why, just in a few words. Alright, I have fun making this video and I appreciate each and every one of you, including the dislikers and the naysayers. I learned the most from them guys. Because of them, it makes me want to try harder and because of them, it makes me want to be better, just to prove them wrong. So, if you're one of them, I appreciate you and I also appreciate 
all you other guys that give me the praise and always comment and watch my videos. I really appreciate you, each and every one. So till next time, y'all, stay real.